Eli Leffel with Evolve Solutions. In today's video, we're going to give an overview of how the Aqualon video processor can ingest audio and then route that via a Dante controller. Now, since Evolve only does video, we've invited a friend over to help us out. His name is Zach Larson from AFPC. So Zach's going to teach and talk about the Dante side, while our own George Ray will give an overview of the Aqualon and video side. Without further ado, let's jump into it. Hi, George Ray with Evolve, and today we have the Aqualon RS4. What we're going to look at is how the RS4 handles Dante audio. So the RS4 on the rack, we have multiple audio sources. We have a Keypro spitting out SDI 1080p with embedded audio. We have an iMac spitting out 3840 by 30 on HDMI with embedded audio, and we have a Windows machine hooked up via DisplayPort 3840 by 2160 at 60 hertz, also spitting out embedded audio. All of these sources go into the Aqualon, all of that audio feeds over to the CL5 on a single Cat5 run. Here on my control laptop, I have the WebRCS Dante page. This shows both Dante network connections, so we do have a primary and a redundant Dante network setup. I have all of the source inputs on the left-hand side, and I have all the destinations on the right-hand side. And as you see right up here at the top, my first four sources from Dante are the CL5. Now I'd like to invite Zach in to talk about how we did this connection and what he sees on the audio side compared to what I see on the video side. I'm Zach Larson with AFPC. I'm gonna be explaining the Yamaha CL5, Dante controller, and the Aqualon system. Um, I guess we'll start with the console. It's pretty basic, 64 by 64, just like Aqualon is. Um, we can come over here to the software and see I have all my devices here, including the Aqualon in here. All your patching will be done through Dante controller. Console's pretty much just an interface to take analog, convert it to digital, and send it wherever you would like. Your Aqualon will come down here in your receivers and in your transmitters. So will my console, so will any of the racks, anything in the network. Currently I'm sending music through my computer using Dante Virtual Sound Card. And you can hear that here. Some nice jazz. You can also already see that over here, sending through. I'm also receiving channels back from their pl playback. So earlier today, Zach and I worked on setting up the Dante connection between his console and the Aqualon. Most of that configuration is done in Dante controller. All the patching between is really done in here. There is some on his software. You gotta tell what video to go where. Yeah, I mean, it's two Cat 5s. It was eight connections and we were up and rolling full corporate show. So this is a way to move any kind of embedded audio to your audio console and then re-embed it. So right now we're taking all of these different embedded sources, sending it to the audio console, taking external sources into the console, bringing it back to Aqualon and re-embedding it in an SDI record feed. It, we're basically eliminating all of those embedders and de-embedders that everybody has cluttered all copper, up. All noise. You can see it as soon as I bring it up. Seamless, easy. Completely source independent. No clock, no gen lock, no word clock necessary. No noise. The physical con connections to make it work were really just two Cat 5s to bring audio and video together. So on our end in the video department, the Cat5, there's two Dante connections that are completely physically separate networks on the back of the Aqualon. However, they need to be pre-configured using Dante controller software. You have to configure them to be redundant, redundant mode, otherwise, 
you have network collisions and no audio. No audio passing. Dante Controller is a free piece of software that you can download from Audionate. You do have to make an account, but again, it's free. Once we had that set up, uh, your audio department is more than likely completely familiar with the software. Your video department, probably not going to be quite so familiar with it. It's a very simple package. It's available on Mac and PC, I believe. Yep. We had to plug directly into each of the ports separately to put them both in redundant, redundant mode. Once that was done, over here on my control screen, you see there's now two network settings. We did set static IP addresses for both of them. Static IP. It is also not necessarily necessary to have a static IP. It will help. The more static IPs you have, the less conflicts you'll have. Uh, we are going through two managed Cisco switches, like this one. Uh, this is an older model, but they still make plenty of different ones. You can go through a basic switch, but the only thing that allows you is to lock it so people can't play with it. Um, there's two in each rack. There's two in there. There's a lot of benefits in using the embedded audio. For one, less connections, less noise. On the video side, I've got one single connection. Again, there's no eighth inch mini jack analog DIs. There's no de-embedders from AJA and Blackmagic coming into play. There's no re-embedding. So my signal flow is an HDMI cable from the laptop into the back of the Aqualon. That embedded audio is there in every place it goes. And then on the Aqualon WebRCS, I merely patched it to whichever Dante channels Zach asked for. Is that easy? We're up and rolling. This entire setup probably took two hours. And, you know, lunch. <laughs>